Okay, 16, uh, you're asked to read the graph. Either you can just use the uh, formula given by the book and, uh, and uh, find the answer. If not, you can take a more... Uh, for me, I don't remember the formula. So what I did is that I find the gradient, then I proceed. Okay, you can either find the gradient and then uh, deduce the equation of the line and then you can find the unknown here corresponding to 200 degrees C. If not, you can form a ratio, but when you are forming a ratio, remember what you are calculating is the increase in resistance to the increase in temperature. So an increase in 100 degrees C will give you an increase in resistance of 0 0.4 ohm. So what happens when you have 200 degrees C is that you have an increase of 0 0.8. This is just the increase. Huh? So meaning that you started off with 1 ohm, right? And this increase is 0 0.8. So that's why you get 1.8. Okay? Uh, some students forget that this is an increase. They just uh, uh, think that the answer is 0 0.8 ohm. And that's why you will get all the confusion and all that. Okay, question 17. Which of the following would not produce a uh, convection current? So the trick here is that Hot air, a uh, hot fluid will always rise vertically, or cold fluid will sink vertically. You have to assume that. So if you drop a hot metal into the water, assuming that the water sinks to the bottom, so the heat source is at the bottom, the hot fluid will rise and the circulation will form. Uh, if you float a piece of ice, the ice being cooler will cause the fluid to sink and then it pushes the warmer fluid up and therefore there will be a uh, convection circulation again you light a candle below the container okay the heat source is below hot fluid rise circulation will form uh, but if you put the light bulb which is the heat source above the water surface uh, you are only warming the top layer of the water and uh, so when the top layer becomes warm, it floats on top, there will be no circulation. So therefore, there will be no convection current. Okay, 18. Uh, for 18, you need to be very careful with the direction of heat flow. So uh, we will go through the, the negative uh, answers first. That means the wrong and uh, why uh, the option is wrong. Okay, uh, if you put the shiny side facing the hot, hot charcoal, uh, you won't prevent the setup of convection current. In fact, whether it's shiny or dark, it has nothing to do with the convection current. The whether shiny, the shiny or dark thing is only uh, affecting the rate of uh, radiation absorption or emission. Okay, so D is wrong. Uh, nothing to do with convection current. Uh, option C, poor emitter. So yes, the shiny side is a poor emitter, but uh, you have to take note of which the heat is flowing. So the charcoal is definitely hotter than your potato, right? The charcoal is the heat source. So if you put emitter here, you are implying that the potato is the heat source and that is impossible, right? So that's why this is wrong. Okay? Uh, of course, uh, you want the potato to cook fast. So you would not want to put the shiny side out anyway. Uh, part B, the doubt side. Uh, again, is talking about conduction. So whether dull or shiny has nothing to do with conduction. Okay? So A, doubt side, it absorbs the radiation faster, so it is correct because the heat source is the charcoal, so the potato or the aluminum foil is taking a role of a uh, absorber. And it is correct, Dow means that you can absorb faster and that is the purpose, right? You want the potato to cook fast. Okay, question 19. Uh, question 19, just be very careful with the, the unit here and the unit here. Uh, I know that we always tell you to convert 
uh, all the parameter into SI unit. But if you look at the specific latent heat here, is per gram. So if it is per gram, then you do not need to change this into kg. Okay, you can directly plug these two value into your formula, and uh, you will get the answer uh, quite easily. Okay, question 20. Uh, this question is quite similar to the Swiss cottage question. Uh, so again, we'll go through all the wrong answers first. So again, if you look at option A, hot air cannot escape the bottle. That is not due to the cloth. Okay, that is due to the cap. And uh, why is there hot air? You are going to keep this bottle cool, right? So why you want to trap the hot air anyway? So this is wrong. Uh, for your part B, the cloth conduct heat from the bottle into the water. Uh, okay, yes, you can say that, but why would the heat want to conduct through the cloth when there is already a direct contact here? Okay, between the water bottle and the water body here. And uh, cloth, because it is fiber, uh, it has a lot of air trapped inside, it won't be a good conductor anyway. So uh, this option B is wrong in two folds. Okay, let, the, let us look at option C. The drain cannot evaporate from the bottle. So you want to keep this cool. Uh, so you want evaporation to occur. And uh, so it doesn't make sense for option C. Uh, now option D makes sense because what happened is that this cloth after soaking in water uh, will not only have a lot of water uh, in it but also because the cloth gives a large surface area and evaporation uh, the rate of evaporation actually depends on uh, the amount of surface area so the cloth actually ensures a uh, good rate of evaporation and evaporation uh, give rise to a cooling effect and therefore keeps the uh, bottle cool so that's why your option d is correct 